Alright, this is to show you how to um, fix your button problems with your PlayStation controller. Uh, all you have to do is take it apart and clean everything up so that the buttons work properly. I already took the screws out just to make this a little bit faster on the video, but there's five. You got one, two, three, four, five screws. When you open it, it's going to make a mess. Your battery comes off. Um, the R2 and L2 buttons will come off. Those come out. Don't lose those little springs that are on there. Just keep everything set aside. Um, just to show you how the battery is going to go back in, there's little brackets that hold the battery in place. And it just sets in there. It doesn't click in. So when you put it back together, you got to go through the hassle of balancing that as you put everything together. Um, if you could see this on the video, mine's full of cat hair and dirt, and I can see all kinds of stuff in there. And I cleaned this about a month ago, but I mean, that'll just tell you how much stuff can get inside your controller, even though it's all sealed up. So, to get to the buttons and everything, you have to take the, the board out. There's one screw that holds this down, and it's right there. A little black dot. Um, you need a very small screwdriver for this. It's basically like a computer screwdriver. I don't know what the size of it is. Maybe somebody can leave a comment and tell me. And then that comes out. It's the joystick that's holding it in right now. So what you want to do is basically pop the joystick there. You can pull it off. You can actually pull the tabs right off those. And then there we go. So now I've got it freed up. That wire is connected to the motors that make it vibrate. These have a little clip that hold them into the controller there. One on each side, there's a red clip that's holding that down. Same thing over here. If you can just get your fingernail even and just pop that, I mean, you can get a little rough with it if you're not going to break it. Obviously, be careful, it does break. You know, I'm trying to be diligent. There we go. Sorry, now my thumb's covering that on the video. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm just popping those red clips I showed. And so then, here's the basically the meat of the controller and there's the circuit board this is where all the button contacts are so this is basically what you're going to want to clean up <clears throat> and then the inside of the buttons these can all come out they just go right back in you can tell how they go anyway I mean it's pretty obvious this is the d-pad this is the buttons like the triangle square circle and X look how dirty that is you can see hair and dirt and probably some spills and hand sweat and who knows what in there. Um, I like to just take all the little buttons out. You can even dump them out. I mean, you know how your PlayStation goes back to controller goes back together. You know what buttons go where. So um, these look kind of weird on the back side, by the way. But you can see. Oh, let me try to show this on the screen really well. If you look right there, there's a tab, and then there's a small tab, and there's an even smaller tab. There we go, let's get a shot of it. So, when, when you put it in, I mean, it actually guides you, so you can't mess that up. If you look at that angle there, that's where those pegs go in. So, it even helps you straighten it out. I mean, you really can't mess this up too easily. Just be careful not to break anything. I'm just going to, and seriously, this thing just, little, there's the battery hanging off of it. Just set that aside because that's not needing to be cleaned right now. So the buttons and everything, put them all together. And that's just a bowl of water. You could throw all your buttons in there. There's even my PlayStation menu button. 
joysticks. Don't put the joysticks in there because it's got this hole where it sits on the peg and you don't want that to get all full of water and then drip back into your controller later. So if you saw my other video about how to fix the PlayStation errors, you know I'm pretty big on Q-tips and alcohol and that's how we're going to clean the buttons too. Same thing, I've got isopropyl alcohol, 91% antiseptic. You can find that in pharmacy sections. So I just use that to get all the gunk out of the pads. You can see already there's a difference. You can tell which one I cleaned. Just go around. Clean up all these little parts. Look how dirty that is. And that's what's keeping my triangle button from working right now. But it'll work like new in just a minute. You just throw it in the water and let it let it rinse all the crap off. Alright. And then before you put everything together too, it's good to clean these little you know, or at least check the um the joysticks. This is the joystick, you know, underneath the part that you actually hold. And you can see there's there's actually hair in here. Blow that right out. Good as new. Board's clean. Make sure there's nothing getting stuck in here. Alright, now the tricky part. Putting it all back together. So when you do this, the first thing you want to do is put the pads back on for the joysticks. They just click right on it, doesn't even. You can see how they go. There's a rectangular shape to it. It'll just pop right on, click it right down. And then you gotta take this piece and basically line up all of your buttons the way they go. So start with, you know, the, the ones you know. And you can see those pegs I was talking about, how they fit in a certain way. So again, you can't really mess this up too easily. And if there's any water in there, you can see there's still water in that maybe. Just soak that out with a dry Q-tip and you're good. And honestly, it's okay if there's a tiny bit. It's not like you're going to short out your controller or anything like that. Okay. That's all the buttons. And then you take the um, this pad. And you can see that there's the kind of rectangular shape here. It's like two little plus signs put together. So this fits an exact way over that too. So that that fits through the middle. And just hold that down. And then the other side is your D-pad, which is this thing if you don't know what a D-pad is. And then sensor pad. You can set any direction. Okay. And then um, this is your start, select, and PlayStation menu button. Drop the menu button itself in first, and that goes just like that. Just put the pad right over it. Sorry, getting dirty again just from the area around here. Okay. And then your your ones. I accidentally put these backwards all the time because I'm looking at it upside down. Okay, there we go. So keep this upside down for a minute so you don't drop everything back out of it because it'll all just fall right out and then kind of hold this whole mess you know again the battery can hang it's not going to break or anything let's flip it over Let me try to do this so you can see okay there we go okay there we go see how that goes right back on top of all the buttons and see how it kind of fitted itself back in there real easily these guys slide in I'm trying really hard to show that without it losing focus if you can see to the left of my finger there 
this white bracken actually slides into a little track. You could see it if you just listen to what I'm saying. There's a little track it slides into. You kind of lift up the one button so that it can get under it. You can actually take the one button by itself out for just a sec if you need to get it in there. And there we go. That way I can show it easier. See that? You just need to make sure that the button is pushing that pad and you know you got it in. Okay. And then you have to do this screw here. Don't forget about that to screw the board back down. It doesn't need to be ridiculously tight either, just finger tight. And your battery is going to go back the same way and set into that track I was talking about. It shouldn't wiggle. Okay. So when you put these R2 buttons back on, you have to make sure the spring is facing the right direction. When you put it on, it's going to rest against this white part here. And then there's these two little brackets. See that hook there? There we go. That that's going to go into. You have to put these on without knocking everything else out of place. And it's really, really annoying. There we go. Okay. See how it springs back. And again, you got to make sure it's on top of the pad. Just moving around. Okay, and then the other uh, other R2 button. I mean the L2. Spring's gonna rest against that. Slide in over that pad there. Click it into those pegs, and then make sure it's springing back. There it goes. Okay. So this is exactly what it should look like before you put everything in. Don't forget the screw for the circuit board, the battery has to be perfect, these need to be clicked down, get your, your two buttons on, which is probably the hardest part of all, except for putting the back back on, is the trickiest part of all of this. When you do this, you need to get on top of these buttons a little bit without knocking them back off, and they fall off easy. Okay. See, I'm not going all the way over and trying to put the buttons through yet. You can't. Because if you do, you won't get this little clip back over the battery. So, see how I'm doing this? Do the bottom first. And if you get it, those buttons will pop out on their own. Okay? And then it'll click all back together. And everything should work fine. I'll even show you this is going to work right now. There you go. It's coming on. My TV is very far from here. Give it just a sec. And there you go. So now you know the controller's functioning and all that. And you just put your five screws back in. And it should work like brand new. Um, if you have any problems with freezing and crashing on your games, check out my other video on how to clean the uh, Blu-ray lens, and that'll fix that for you too.